people it's gonna be a very long weekend because um you know they wouldn't go to work on i mean they didn't go they, they went home on friday after work on saturday they won't be the way they went and work sunday they were in and work some of them will not go to work today because hey, it is public holiday from tomorrow eh? for some people even though the moon wasn't sighted so the salah celebration may properly take place on thursday but you know as announced public holiday is already kickstarted for some people so i mean they had to do automatic off from work but hey where, wherever you are whichever cuts out for you good evening to you welcome to the evening rush 90.3 voice of the people of him this is where nigeria's sweetest finest most exciting and interesting conversation takes place every evening and uh, my name is precious Ingi. i'm your host for the show and my only just to be asking questions so and to be talking no, and i ask questions from all angles so for those of you who call me a pc woman leader where don't know god bless you because me i'll ask questions that is, that is concerning everybody here eh? because i am for everybody and for nobody and I, I'm, I'm here in the studio with my monday thursday tonic barrister darlington he's with me in the studio barrister darlington good evening pretty precious sa, 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 sa. now that uh, your party is in charge anything <laughs> for the boys <laughs> okay so i will not be paying for light i'll, I'll not be buying each unit for 285 naira i'll be buying it for one naira i'll be buying it for 285 naira i'll be buying it one naira my sister Linton, please stop please stop please stop i hope you had a great weekend though my dear there was mm. nothing great about the weekend Why, though sir? while i was analyzing they were taking my light on and because off. i was even going to ask you eh, i was going to ask you what the light situation is truly in your mm. part of town because from where i live eh, it looks like it's worse than it's ever been mm. you um, know I, I could boast of 18 hours lights you know of past supply before but now nah, if we get five safe now god help us what's uh, what's really happening uh, yes now nah, that is the the in the spirit of the increment no, this is before the increments now, uh, Mr. Darlington. Uh, no, I said uh, because for you to even uh, begin to increase the prices, the product must be available. How do you increase the price of something that is not there? Uh, eh? I was asking people, how can five thousand megawatt of electricity give you twenty hours of light anywhere in Nigeria? I mean, anywhere five thousand. If you share it itself, if you get uh, two hours now by the grace of God, so it's not possible. It can never be. Not to talk of the two point something trillion naira they told you they are they are they are subsidizing what? Pressure they just sit down and tell Tinubu this is how much you're supposed to give us, that's how much we are using to generate light to. And he will not ask them, come. Let, let me see how much light you generated in a month, in a week, in a year, to bring this uh, this amount. He will not ask. They now shift it to you and I to pay. Yes now, Abi. Yes, we are to pay. So, so you think that the bill? I, I, I wanted to. I know no, you think because most Nigerians think that the bill mm. is is um it's it's really un, unfair. Uh, on it Nigerians. is more than unfair. It is not possible. Uh, uh, it can never be five thousand. Me- Even if you generate light to twenty four hours, eh, precious, we cannot consume that kind of money. It is not possible. We are just two hundred million. No, eh, when you now reduce it to household, it may not be up to hundred million. Yeah. All right, so so Barrister Darlington, you know today is a very big day for us, and I don't have you alone. So let's get started very quickly, so that we can, mm. you know, um, get to the point where we'll bring in our guests. So on our first line of a uh, lineup of conversation this evening, on our hot topic this evening, gunmen abduct ex militant, uh, ex militant leader, Igbiri Papa, kill two aides. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay, oh. all right. I don't know what's ringing in the Niger Delta, but it better not brew. Kogi community buries 25 victims of banditry. Remember this banditry in Kogi community? That mm-hmm. is a spillover of Agatu community. Uh, in fact, Agatu heads men attack. That's exactly the conversation. All right. And there's still on the hot topic this evening. Terrorists killed army lieutenant. Mm-hmm. Wounded four soldiers mm-hmm. in Beral and in, in Burutai ambush. Mm-hmm. Defense headquarters clarifies. Mm-hmm. Uh, are they giving them a more treatment? I don't know. I guess mm. it's as good as mine. But let's go forward. Reintegrating terrorists into society dangerous. Ex-soldiers tell federal government. No. Okay. We don't know. And then we'll move forward. Mixed reactions as Taraba kidnap Kingpin Wadume gets heroic welcome after jail term. Mm. Are you serious? Okay. We'll go further to other conversations. Uh, court declines to relocate Binance executive Tigran Gambayan uh, from Kuje prison to EFCC custody. They say sit down for prison where you're made today. day. Mm. Uh, all right. Mm. Okay. Uh, then moving on to other conversations that we'll be having this evening. Um, 
very quickly uh stop government officials from spending public funds on private jets to visit you for salah she who sunny tells tinobu maybe they need to spend public funds to use carry private jets come visit you for salah all right as uh, zamfara don't spare anybody involved in kidnapping banditry group to uh, governor lawal uh, yeah and then we move forward better edu scandal 30 billion naira recovered 50 bank accounts under investigation according to efcc <laughs> okay edu obas uh, edu rada obaseki sweat in omobayo marvelous godwin as shaibu's replacement and of course shaibu blows out says we will fight this just injustice mm -hmm. we will fight this injustice felix shaibu on impeachment because these are the hot topics that we have but you know usually we would like to go and drink water and drop cup eh? because man shall not come and live by talking alone so let's just take a little break <laughs> when we come back we'll, uh, continue to dissect the conversation but our major focus uh today would be on the state of insecurity in the country generally and i will be having joining us uh former dss deputy director uh in the pressing of uh dennis and macri he'll be joining us in the conversation uh just very shortly stay with us Lagos. this is the evening rush 90.3 voice of the people of him we'll be right back Listen to hot critical analysis and top trending topics of the day. Join Precious, Monday to Friday, 7 to 9 p.m. Uh All right, I guess you are welcome back. It is still 90.3, Voice of the People of him. So let's get to Edu State first before we talk about security issues. As um, the Edu State Governor, Godwin Abasaki, has sworn in Marvelous Godwin. Uh, yeah. Marvelous Godwin as the new deputy governor of the state. So you have Godwin Obaseki and Godwin Marvelous <laughs> as the governor and deputy of the state. Uh, so reports, uh, it's been reported that uh, Omobayo replaced Philip Schreiber, who was earlier impeached by the State House of Assembly uh, early this morning. It happened. In fact, that was the breakfast that he served us, hot one, hot tea this morning. But the embattled Edo State Deputy Governor, Philip Schreiber, has rejected his impeachment by the State House of Assembly, describing it as illegal. Ha, now, wow. Remember that the panel in its uh, report said the allegations of perjury was not proven beyond reasonable doubt by the complainant against the deputy governor, while that of uh, disclosure of government officials' document was proven beyond reasonable doubt against the deputy governor. So, that's a, that, that, that wasn't a complaint filed. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So, Barista Darling uh, let, yeah. let's rush over this very quickly because I have a guest standing back. I think, I think, um, First, I, I greet my viewers and listeners and fans. Uh, I wish our Muslim brothers a happy celebration tomorrow or next, or next uh, the day after tomorrow, depending on when they see the moon. But if you ask me, what is going on in Edo State is illegality per excellence. Hmm. Illeg you say so? Yes, illegality because one, you see, precious, it doesn't not bother you that government, government official, government, state, federal, even local, they don't obey court order. Does it not bother you? Uh, Philip Shaibu went to court in Abuja. The Abuja court is handling the matter. And the matter is still existing in that court. How can he now leave the matter that he instituted against the, the, now, uh, the state assembly? And then be come and be answering questions about impeachment. That was why he did not answer them. Well, the time they were inviting him, the man refused to go because there is a court order, there is a court uh, action which he instituted. So if he now answered it, that means the court uh, uh, action he instituted is now is now null and void. That was why the man did not uh, respond to the invitation they gave him. Well, you know that many things that this case of eh? Philip Schreiber and the governor of Edo State is, um, you know, one of um, uh, greed on the part of Philip Schreiber of, you know, not being Look, whatever, whatever it is, the court is handling the matter. Why can't they wait? Why can't they wait? Because they're in a hurry to remove him. Uh, they feel that time is running out. Look, whenever you have a vested interest in a matter, you are going to commit this type of criminality. Do, do you think Philip Shabby was over ambitious? How can he be? What is over? Anybody can aspire to be anything now. Uh -huh. Did he challenge? He said he wants to become the governor because the governor's time will expire. And the man is not seen ambition. But they said about, uh, hold on, hold on. If you are not talking about, uh, what is it called now? Um, um, uh, turn by turn uh, politics. Mm. It is left for the people to decide. Let let the people decide. If the people say that uh, they lack uh, Philip Shaibu to lead them, in spite of uh, whether it is their turn or not, 
if the poll will decide now, when are we going to allow the people to take decision eh, about who leads them? Must it be always appoint, appointing people in the name of uh, selection and you claim an election has been conducted? That's what is going on. Eh? All this noise about uh, it is the turn of these people. It is the, the other people that have been uh, it have been their turn all this while. Have they brought Uhuru? Have they brought uh, Paradise? Eh? Leave the man. Let him go and test his popularity before the people. That's what I would have thought. You know, this government would have done. This is a double state government. Instead of imposing somebody on the on the people, eh? In the name of what? Okay, do you, do you know that that guy, I learned that he even came from Labour Party or something. Eh? The marvelous. He was not even uh, an old member of uh, PDP. Eh? They just brought him from nowhere just to embarrass everybody. And he's a young man. Apparently, the uh, basic, he wanted somebody who uh, uh, would tell when to sit down and when to stand up. Eh? Is that not what he's playing out? So, so that means that means we're still back to the Godfatherism of issue course. that, that uh, yes. played out between exactly. him and Obasek. Exactly, exactly. That people don't want to tell you the truth. All this now that uh, this remember that the Philip Shabu played a very big role in Obasek's emergence, even in the government. The man, the man worked himself out trying to help that government to stabilize. Now it is his turn to even test his popularity before the people. He are not saying no. It's not his turn. You want to truncate it. And the man said, Look, oh, I want to go there and test my what is wrong there? Please, what is wrong? Eh? I was I've been saying the people should emulate what happened in Anambra. When Peter B left, he left. He didn't depose anybody on anybody. He left. He told Anambra to choose. Eh? I don't know when we are going to get this thing right for God's sake. All the while they have been imposing people on their pressures. Have we gotten it right? All the people they have been imposing on you. Please, did they bring anything good? It is for their own selfish interests. Eh? They don't want an independent person to lead. They want somebody they can control. Somebody they will tell what to do, even when they have left uh, office. And Philip Shabri is saying that history will judge, um, you know, them harshly for their betrayal. Of course. Perhaps especially Obaseki. Of course. Of course, because the man was a real party man. He helped them. He worked. Nobody can say that Philip Shabri was not a, a very good uh, ally in Obaseki's government. But all of a sudden, because of these sectional politics, eh, they say it's not his turn. They want to do south. They want to do north. All the people you have been imposing on the people over the years, please, what paradise did they bring here? People should answer me. And then okay. what you are saying, you say, ah, because eh, when these people came, it was okay. Why okay. must you be politics of uh, selection and the sentimentalism? All right. So, Barry Sadalinson, I think we've had um, Dennis Amakri join us um, over the phone. Thank you so much for joining us. Good evening, sir. Uh, good evening. Uh, perhaps I say good afternoon from where you are. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's good evening. It's, it's past. Oh, it's good afternoon. Good yeah. afternoon, How sir. I'm very well. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Yes. It's, it's such a pleasure to have you here. Nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. So today we want to look at uh, quite, you know, an area of security issues in Nigeria that has become very worrisome. Uh, let me start with, uh, the, um, you know, abduction of Igbiri Papa in Niger Delta. And then we'll go to the celebration of Wadume's release you know, uh, in Taraba State. Mm -hmm. And then we also go to Kogi State, uh, that is a spillover of Benue State's issue. And then we'll go to uh, Borono State, where, um, you know, so a lieutenant has also been killed alongside other uh, military officers, uh, which is almost like what happened in Okwama community in Delta State. So permit me to just um, give a brief summary of all of this, and then i have you have your say. Yeah. Uh, all right. So um, all right. back in the Niger Delta, we do hear that gunmen dressed in army uniform have abducted a popular ex-militant leader, High Chief Sobomabo Jackrich, a.k.a. Iberi Papa, from his uh, Osuku country home in Digi Malokogome area of River State. Now, sources close to the ex-militant leader said the gunman stormed his home around 3 a.m. this morning, Monday, 3 a.m., killed two of his lieutenants and took him away to an unknown place. That's very... I don't know. Now, one of the sources, however, believed that the attack was carried out by the military, adding that some army branded vehicles, including an armored personnel carrier, were used for the operation. Mm -hmm. But we're yet to get any formal reaction from the military, at least not that I can, you know, tell of at the moment. But that's far away. 
in you know uh, uh the niger delta then let's go further to kogi state where we had a spillover of the benway farmer header issue in benway state 25 victims of an attack by bandits or armed headsmen in agojeju Odo community, Agojejo Odo community in the Omala local government area of, um, you know, Kogi State have been buried. The disease, which included two women and four children who were killed by armed men last Thursday, were buried just Saturday over the weekend. Now, um, this issue is a spillover of the Agatu community issue in Benue State, where we did hear that, um, you know, I mean, we, the Agatu community in Benue State is quite very popular with the issue of headers attack and all of that. Yeah. But this particular attack, they said it was more like a reprisal attack by the headers after, um, you know, they were perhaps dealt with and they felt like that some of these people that had dealt with them, you know, spilled over and ran into Kogi State. So they thought that they needed to go there and finish things up. And as a state, 25 people died and they've been given mass burial. Very sad. In fact, the entire Kogi, that community in Kogi State was thrown into chaos uh, last week because of this incident, right? Then we also did hear that, um, uh, yeah, the defense headquarters, uh, in fact, just yesterday Sunday, they clarified that only an army lieutenant was killed and four other soldiers wounded when Boko Haram terrorists ambushed the troops along Burutai Bunigari Road on Thursday. So there were reports that some military personnel were killed. And uh, people now said, okay, so military officers died, including the lieutenant. Why not give them the Okwama treatment? You know, so the um, uh, army headquarters, defense headquarters responded and said that it was just only a lieutenant. But if, if it was a lieutenant alone, is it too small? for us to get the reaction that we got from Okwama, because there's been a lot of reaction that there is no equal treatment. You know the way Okwama was raided, not just Okwama, that's raiding spilled over to other communities, including some Izo communities in Delta State and including some Bayosa State communities. Uh, even till date, I'm not sure that people of Okwama are yet settled back into their communities because of that incident, right? So, and then um, we also have a situation where some retired soldiers have again warned the federal government to be careful with its decision to rehabilitate and reintegrate some repentant terrorists who have gone through the government's de-radicalization program, Operation Safe Corridor, the de-radicalization, the rehabilitation and reintegration program, of course, uh, by uh, the Nigerian army. They said that it is not good enough for, because, you know, that shouting that, how do you reintegrate? And it's very dangerous. How do you reintegrate someone who has a mindset? That's an issue. So I really love your expert opinion on that. But then let's go straight to uh, Taraba State now, where uh, Nigerian Correctional Service uh, confirmed just yesterday, Sunday, the release of kidnapping kingpin Hamisu Bala, a.k.a. Wadume. What do you mean? From its correctional center in Kujay just on Friday. According to officials of the NCOS, uh, Bala was set free because he had completed his seven-year prison term, only seven-year prison term, a known kidnap campaign, who perhaps a lot of people may have been murdered under his watch or hands or instruction. He's been set free. Uh, let me just stop it here, Jajeli, and, and get your reaction, please, sir. Oh, <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Precious. Thanks, um, your questions are very long, so I will expect that maybe we'll be coming back to you again. To definitely, remind you of the definitely. I won't, I won't forget any okay. of them. Yes. Yeah, but let's start with uh, Egberi Papa. Okay, sir. You know, um, I, it's not an abduction. He was arrested. In fact, the police um, public relations officer for River State has come out to say that, yes, it was by a sister agent. You know, and I believe it's the army. Okay. You know who okay. had adopted. So that's been clarified. Uh, who, okay. who have ar arrested him? Yes, uh, that has been clarified. Okay. But all the same, you know, when we look at it, some something happened in Okwama. Then you are going to Bayelsa and Rivers to arrest people. You know, um, I know that there is an investigation going on mm. right now. Mm. An investigation into the killings of those military people. Yes, please. You know, but um, I will always caution the military that they have to be very careful. I don't want us to go back to the days of militancy because the way it is going, it might, we might relapse back into the days of militancy where, you know, um, 
all these guys were in the in the creeks and then of course they were busy uh, doing more kidnapping and then of course uh, uh, shooting and killing each other uh, we don't want to also allow the military to open up new war fronts new war fronts i know that uh, the jtf has been there they are investigating but we want that investigation to be concluded quickly you know it has to be concluded quickly because you never know uh, the implications of it you know they said uh, the military went there for peacekeeping at yes. Yes. but um yes. uh, which kind of peacekeeping that um uh, they didn't uh, carry along the other services uh, the other services need to be carried along because when you look at it, it's supposed to be JTF. You know, even when I was working in the Niger Delta, it is the JTF we deal with. And the JTF includes the Army, Navy, Police, DSS, NSCDC, and they move as a group, you know. But um, you see, when we have the military, in involved in internal security it becomes a problem whereby you see them uh operating you know beyond what is supposed to take place because um the reason why there's a joint task force is because those responsible for other responsibilities will take care of it soldiers are trained to kill people Police are trained to to do law enforcement. So, do you, you know, think? So do you, are you saying? Are you saying that the military went, you know, beyond their jurisdiction in that Okwama um, civil situation? I think they went beyond their or responsibility. Okay. Yeah, they went beyond their responsibility because um, if they are going on such a mission, I know it is all oil theft business. Oh, you know, so you think that this whole thing, you think that this whole issue is linked to oil? It's because about they said it, they oil. said it was about land dispute between communities, and that's that's the instruction. If it's that, about that's land what we, dispute, we, knew, we heard rather. If it's about land dispute, that land dispute will be handled by the police or the local government chairman or the governor. I have been in a state where you know we have people fighting over land. And we don't go and bring military to come and do peace mission. Although the military was there in the in the in the state capital, but you know, land issues, even ethnic uh, religious issues are this decided or solved by the state governor. You know, I remember when I was working in Taraba State in the north, it was the secretary to state government that was there to, you know. Uh, deal with it and uh, I represented the DSS and then of course we have the police uh, us commissioner also represented and then we solve the problem for them you know you don't go and bring military to go and solve uh, land issues so I know that uh, when this thing happened people were unsettled and they were not ready you know uh, for the right thing to be said at that time so uh, all kinds of narratives we are coming out from uh, the area. So uh, that is, they have to think again. Let the let, let investigation bring out the real truth. All right. So um, over, over the months, so apologies for cutting you, sir. Okay, let me let me yeah. let you land because I was going go to ahead, say, okay. I was going to say that you know you go over ahead. the years we've had this issue with banditry in northwestern part of nigeria um it's it's mm -hmm. been a reoccurring thing i don't know why we still don't call them terrorists because they've been proscribed we still call them bandits we still have communities in parts in nigeria where bandits are still taking tax from people before they go to their farms one of the reasons many reasons why there is high price of you know uh, agricultural produce in nigeria right now so uh these bandits have been doing a lot one of which was the fact that um they killed some military they killed a lieutenant just like the uh, the uh, defense headquarters said I mean, a lot of people expected the okwama reach by the military to happen in borono state yeah. but we also did know that we did not see that same reach when some naval office when the naval flight was gunned down in um in, in niger states 
so um do you think that there's balance in the way the, the security or the nigerian security force generally handles issues concerning insecurity because that's the education um, that's the worry see, by many yes um i i used to be working in the security agency and um uh, by all means, we try to be very balanced when it comes to things like this. So do you think recently but, uh, they've been very balanced? Apologies. I, uh, uh, right now, I think basically they are fighting terrorism. In fact, those guys are not bandits, please. Because the high court in Nigeria yeah. have already declared them as terrorists. Terrorist. Absolutely. So they are terrorists, okay? Yes, please. I know that, uh, and you know the situation that led to it. Uh, they were bandits originally, but uh, and what? What oh, do yeah, you think? I'm losing your voice. Um, hello, sir. Can you hear me? I think I'm losing your voice. Uh, apologies. I hope that I can get you rejoin us. I'm losing your voice. All right. So, Barry, so darling, see you. Terrorists, because okay. okay. Yeah, they, they are terrorizing the people. Okay. So, okay. anyway, the balance you are talking about, I I don't think is existing because. Okuama is not the first place where military officers have been killed. You know, very senior officers have been killed in Medugri, in the north somewhere. And then, of course, um, it was handled whereby we, 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 we were gone ahead to give them state burial. Mm. And um, everybody forgot that they keep on looking for these people. So you know, why is your commerce then, issue very special and different? You know, because one thing about, uh, they, they, like I told you, it's about oil theft. Oh, wow. It's about oil theft. Um, when people will bribe their ways to go down to the Niger Delta, to go and work there. In the, in the different forces, police, um uh, NICDC, navy they go down there and then of course during that period within six months many of them buy cars hmm. so you find out that the bunkering thing the bunkering thing is something that is going on heavily i don't think the government is ready to deal with this because you see when we are talking of oil theft it starts from the top in an NBC all the way down to the creeks and we've said it in so many places, so many different times, and nobody is really paying attention because too many people are involved. You know, when you say about 400,000 barrels of oil are being lost on a daily basis, maybe you don't know how much 400,000 barrels of oil is. I used to work for a company called Adax Petroleum. Adax Petroleum produces 100,000 barrels of oil a day. And that is the amount that makes them run their company very well, pay their uh, workers very good salaries and everything. Okay? So think of 400,000. Hmm. That means we are talking of a very large corporation. You know, a very large corporation. Shell itself you know was producing about one point something million barrels a day during the height of the militancy shell came down all the way to six hundred thousand. so you can see what i'm talking about it's a lot of money it's a lot of money you see that every day although they've uh, hired uh, tantita uh, security yes, to the look after the pulling. pipeline yes and all yes. the rest but you still find out is on badges of uh, ships so, loaded so, with crude oil so so you, you have know, said this now out. you have said this now that you're certain that it's likely oil theft but the nigerian military hasn't said so they are yet to tell us the nature of peacekeeping that these people you know um that the military offic officials uh, were involved the in. nigerian military nigerian military is not going to tell you that nigerian military is going to tell you that because some questions are going to arise from that investigation you know and one of the questions is you are jtf what are you doing in the creeks hmm. without the other services hmm. why why is it only your service that is going there and you say you are going for um 
uh, uh, peacekeeping. Yes. Uh, now, why is the police not there? Why is the DSS not there? These are questions that the military cannot answer. Okay. So, um, you um, uh, although, you know, okay. the killing of top officers was a very, very condemnable very act. Very sad. You know, very sad. But, you know, what is going on? All right. Thank you, sir. I didn't let you know. I have um, my one of my in-house analysts with me, Barry Sodalington. Um, he's here in the studio with us. So I'd like to find out from you. Okay. Him, I know um, as, yes, please. As a civilian, Barry Sodalington, um, uh, some retired and military officers have complained about the fear of, of reintegrating um, Boko Haram terrorists back into the society. They worry about that. As a civilian, not I know I understand that you're probably not in in any of those centers right now. Um, those um, what do they call them again? Uh, rehabilitation centers where the ID camps and all that. Uh, so IDPs. But as someone who may have been affected by the activities of this Boko Haram, how do you think a civilian who was affected by the activity will feel uh, seeing them back into the society and free? Do you think that the worries of these retired military officers are valid? It is not. It is not, and it's very sad. Uh, first of all, I... Their worries are not valid. Uh, first of all, I greet uh, Mr. Macri. I, I greet you. Yes. He can hear you, sir. Now, it is very sad, and it is because we don't have a, a nation yet. What we have are tribal enclaves who are only after the protection of their own people. If we have a nation, such a thing will not happen. It can never happen. Never. Who are the people that are rehabilitated? Don't you know where they came from? They even told you that because they swore with the Quran. That's, all, that's the only condition. That they swore with the Quran. And that was what made, made them build to become a repentant a, 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 a terrorist. Is that not so funny? Now, the people you are talking about, have you not noticed that the people now pay more allegiance to the terrorists than the federal government? How have, you not no, have you not noticed it? How so? The people pay protection fee to these terrorists. The allegiance is not... That's why they, that's why they cover them all. You mean the public, the general the, public? Y- yes. The people within that area where they operate, they prefer the protection of the terrorists than the protection of the federal government because they are not getting any protection from the federal government. Mr. Dennis, uh, Macri, do, do you agree with that? Do you, do you agree to that, please? That is I agree. I agree totally with him. See, oh my goodness! Um, you don't. You you won't blame the people there, because you see, these terrorists are operating in those very rural areas yeah. where That's they harass them. Of course, you know, and as they harass them, they cannot go to their farms, and the federal government is not there to protect them yeah. to go to their farms. So the best thing for them, the terrorists said, you should pay tax before we allow you to go to your farm. So they pay the tax and they allow them to go to the farm. So you find out that this, that's why we call your governed spaces, mm-hmm. you know, where there is no law enforcement presence. Mm-hmm. And as long as government is not available, they are not going to die. They are not going to wait for government. So their allegiance will be to them, of course. Mm-hmm. Now, when these people see you rehabilitating their tormentors, yeah. what do you think will be going on in their mind? They say, so this man, this man that did this, is, so believe we see them with their naked eye, they, be, they can identify them and they can say to the public what they did to them and all that. Then after they have been captured, they now see them going back to the military and all that. Please, if you're a villager, will you have the guts to even challenge them or give a police or the government any information about them? When you are seeing what is going on, eh? It's not possible. So it is the federal government that doesn't want this thing to end. The way they are going about it. We have been saying it. The federal government of Nigeria, they have not told us what they have with these people. Seriously. It started when some people went to the Sahel region, went to Mali, and told them that they can come to Nigeria and now Nigeria is their home. Precious. If you are a patriotic leader, can you say that? That is, you openly invited criminals into your country. Eh? Openly. It's not hidden. You saw how Aero 5 took our money to go and pay them, and yet they still came in. Eh? This other person said, if you have $200, you are free to come into Nigeria, and you can be given a visa at the point of entry. 
Precious, is that not how this thing started? I was in a studio when they asked me my take on it. I said, this is an indirect way of recruiting terrorists into this country. And Nigeria will never be okay with these people coming in. Is that not what happened? Ask yourself, how can somebody go to a village, kill all the people, take over that village, take over their farm, take over their home, their family home, and sack all of them? And then and now terrorists are occupying some villages in uh, Plateau and in Benue. And the federal government is aware. If these people had a home abnisho, would they be occupying other people's home? Imagine if you're in Lagos here now, you want to travel to Plateau. And you say you want to go and visit your and they told you, ah, which home? Ah, that the people that came from somewhere in Senegal, in Sahel, in Mali, that there are people they are taking over your village, even your family compound, they are all there dancing and celebrating. Will you go back? Will you travel? Pressure, that's what is going on today. Today, as I speak, the governor has said it. That communities have been taken over. So when the people see all these things, please, on what moral ground will you now ask them to be happy to give you information about whoever? Eh? The one they gave you, what did you do with it? The 400 list they gave you, what did you do with it? Eh? So you can see that when you look at it from all angles, the federal government is complicit. They are the people making Nigeria not to even talk again about terrorism. Because when you talk, they won't do anything. Even the one they show them, have they acted on it? The answer is no. They choose and pick. Whenever it suits their fancy, they will take one person as a scapegoat. Then showcase him and people will tell, yeah, they are fighting in security. We are not fighting anything. If they are fighting in security, those people will not. Do you remember that these people, they even protested that the food they are giving them is not up to standard. Terrorists. Pressure terrorists. They protested. Eh? And the federal government is just pampering them, pampering them. So what do you expect from the people? They will say, ah, which one is our own? So that is the reason why this thing has to continue to fester. Eh? Okay. All right. So um Sir Dennis Amakri, I'm coming back to you. Um in twenty fifteen, uh, I mean after the election, there was a revelation by one Kao Baraje uh, ha- about how they brought some uh, bandits. In fact, they called them armed militias mm. from uh, Mali, Burkina Faso and other African countries to Nigeria to help win the election. Mm-hmm. Do you think that that's the reason why we're still having this insecurity issue in Nigeria? Can you link this recent banditry issues or ongoing banditry issues to that issue of you know, getting full any militias from Mali, Sierra Leone, Senegal, others to win 2015 election. That statement linked to Kawo Baraje in, you know, um, late 2022. The answer is yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. And I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to Boko Haram mm-hmm. because that's where it started. You see, we have to be one country because if we're not one country, then we're just deceiving ourselves. Exactly. Patriotism is one that you see everybody as one. There are certain people in this country who don't believe in Nigeria that they are not Nigerians, or in fact, anybody who is not from the northern part of the country is not, a, a, you know, cannot be president. And it started with good luck, Jonathan. You think that's now, a real remember, thing? It's a, it's a, it's just, a, just remember, I'm yeah. going to remind you because you are a journalist. Go and investigate, and when you investigate, you see it. Jonathan said, when, in fact, when the Chibo girls were abducted, yes, the government did not believe in it. Mm. They didn't believe. I work in the security agency then. Uh, no, before then, I've retired that by then. But I'm still in touch with my people there. Hmm. They don't believe, the government didn't believe that this can happen. Because the indices are very, very wrong. One, you carry 200 and something school children into the desert. Now, how do you carry them down there? By bus? Or do you bring them motorcycles to put all of them in it? How do you manage them to take all the way down there to where you want to keep them? And then you hit all of them and nobody can see them. Yeah. You know? Now, there are questions about that. The, 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 the governor and the, even the um, 
uh, the principal of that school. Remember, yes, people please. were making fun of it. Okay. When people were making fun of it, when uh, uh, President Jonathan's wife was saying that only uh, you walk home, there is God, and uh, we are making fun of it. But the lady was saying a real it's thing, fine. the truth about what happened, what was happening. Because some people are playing games. How can you be a principal? You've lost 200 of your students. The president's wife called you to come so that you can sit down and plan strategies of going to get these children back. And you didn't come the first day. Hmm? Then the second day, you reluctantly went down there. You know, that's why she's saying there is God. Okay. Now, that is Boko Haram. 1915, 1914-15, the election. Remember, President Buhari has run that election for almost three times. He failed. Yes, please. Very correct. And this time, he felt that, okay, they must get it by all means. Amazing. And, of course, mm -hmm. there was a coalition sure. that came up with a party and of course maybe everybody in that party might not be aware of it but there were some people that were brought even buhari himself said it you know i'm saying this because it is not the rumor when the president of chad the present president of chad when he took over from his father who died came to nigeria at uh, asu rock they asked Buhari, a point, a journalist asked him, what are we doing about these bandits? They were called bandits then. And he said, they will take care of them and let them go back to where they come from. That's President Buhari. I'm quoting him directly. If you go to the archives, rewind the tapes and you will hear him. He said it. Yeah, where they came from, wrong. that means they are not Nigerians. You know, they are not Nigerians. And these guys are French speaking, French speaking Fulanese. Um, so, so the, the former yeah. governor of Benue State had reiterated that a couple mm, of times okay. that even the headers that have been, um, you know, raving mm, havoc yeah. uh, in, in Benue State speak very strange languages as different from that of Nigerian language. Mm. Yes, they are not speaking Fulani at all. Mm -hmm. You know, they are speaking French for full day. Mm. You know, French and full day. Now, these guys has been harassing after jonathan considered that uh, election there was nothing to do again because you brought out it's just like you brought out an army to fight something and that was remember now. again i'll remind you i keep on reminding you because i deal with facts the president before the election said that if you lose that election the monkey and the, the baboon will, will be soaked, soaked in their blood. Own blood. Yes, he said it. The what statement, the mean? statement that led to Jonathan saying that no, um, his ambition is not, not worth, worth of the blood of any Nigerian. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Now we are communicating. Exactly. So you find out that this happened, and these people, after the winning of that election, were allowed. They 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 were not used again. So these people became bandits. Okay. Yes. They were busy kidnapping because they had to survive. Exactly. So they were they were they were kidnapping and taking money and everything and all those rest. And then of course at a particular time, um, the Kaduna State Governor, who is very very much in the know of how they exactly. came about, exactly, was paying them the stipends. You mean you month. mean former Governor Erufai who said that the government knew exactly where knows exactly where, knows exactly where the bandits are yeah, and how to are, get these them. These are not secrets. Yes, these are not secrets. He said it himself. He was paying them, and as he was paying them, after a while, he said he was not paying again. Mm. They said, "Oh, if you don't pay again, mm. then we'll make this state ungovernable for you." Exactly. That's why they started. Mm you know kidnapping people from school they even went to nda yes our nigerian defense okay. academy they went there and of course it forced rufai to close all the schools in kaduna states he closed all the schools because even his children were there 
Now, that was that. And then, of course, they were trying to negotiate and all the rest, trying to get them back to where they come from. And there was a time that they were talking of Ruga and all those kind of things that this food, they all did, they, to the Nigerian public, it was Fulani, Yetsmen, yeah. and all those kind of things. And I remember very well, the one billion naira yes. was paid to them, them to go back. But hello, it is very, very funny for them to go back because they can't go back. How can you leave this lush, rich area mm. and go into the desert and live there? It's not possible. Exactly. So they need to stay. And now they become a thorn in the flesh of government. government yes. Buhari managed it until he left. He left. And after he left, it continued because they were still around. They were going ahead, you know, busy kidnapping people, asking for money. Before, we've been dealing with kidnap cases, even in the Niger Delta. They don't used to kill people. They kidnap people to, you know, bring forth their, uh, their, 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 their objective or whatever. You know, like Niger Delta militants, resource control and everything, you know. But these guys started killing victims. Sometimes they will kill and then, of course, the, 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 the victim is dead, but they continue uh, negotiating and then collect the money and then later you discover the person you have been uh, negotiating for is dead. And that's why we're having some people now who... Uh, an Islamic cleric who feel that uh, he's a negotiation specialist coming out to talk anything he likes. Because so, these are people that were going in between. And then, of course, thank God, the security agencies were very much awake to their responsibility by, you know, arresting Tukul Mamu, you know, who is his special assistant to Sheikh Gumi. And remember what Shigumi said, you know, so if you, if you listen to what is going on in the country very well, you will see it's like an open book, an open secret, and you can see what is going on. So if we, but now that we were, we are where we are right now, um, the situation it's almost out of hand because not so long ago, uh, we've seen that over 287 children, whom they now cut down to 137, were kidnapped in almost same manner from a secondary school in Kaduna State, and it looks like this is a circle that we're not going to leave. How do we get out of this? Because we can't continue wasting lives. In all of this, let's also remember that these people are actually killing real Nigerians causing havoc the one reason why we don't have enough agricultural produce or the prices of food items are on the increase is because people no longer access their farms peacefully people are scared of leaving their farm and going to their farms and i'd like to also know these same bandits are they still the same reason why there is a header farmer issue the issue that's is going on now in almost all our farms uh where we have some armed headsmen terrorizing people in their farms is it the same thing or this is a different issue entirely the header farmer thing has two faces. One is the Fulani is indigenous to this place with, you know, farmers that are also indigenous to this place. But these other imported ones are also getting into it because as far as they are concerned, they see Nigeria as their homeland. Yes. But they were invited. And then they will go in there and then of course, see, how can you be fighting with somebody about farm? And then you kill the people, you burn all the houses, the people run away into IDP camps. Now you see that we have one of the largest IDP camps in the world. They run into those places, leaving their own area vacant. And then, of course, you occupy it and they, they, started, they started living there. Why can't those state governments make sure that the places that these idp people came from is ready enough for them to go back because you cannot live in idp camp forever yeah, except you want to form a different town some of them can no longer go back to their homes as almost of them said they can no longer that go is back what to their it homes. is because 
those people that kill them are still around there, you know, moving around. And they are in those places we call the govern ungoverned spaces because we have not been able to put law enforcement into all so, the so is it now clear that we're running a parallel government because rfi told us while he was in um government that some bandits are running a parallel government with his administration so if we have areas that are governed in a sovereign country does it mean that there's actually a parallel government in the country it's not a parallel government it's not a parallel because they're government. collecting taxes they're from trying... some people no their their objective is to create a caliphate oh wow okay? uh let me rewind again during jonathan's period remember before the election 11 local governments in between adamawa and uh, borno state, state were occupied mm -hmm. by band bandits uh, by terrorists this book haram. Boko haram 11 and he has to because if he carries out the election without those ele 11 states 11 uh, local, local governments government, then, yeah then the election is going to be null and void according to the constitution everybody must partake so he he suspended the election and then hired a mercenary team from south africa executive outcomes executive outcomes went in there and drove them out of the place before the election was held remember and that was done in less than three in in a couple of weeks so, so if that is drove, it, it, drove, it, drove them out so if that and is now, possible yeah. how come it's still no, impossible listen, listen, to the okay, clincher, listen to the clincher okay uh, precious he drove them out they drove them out and the election was held and during that election jonathan later considered and immediately the new government came in they cancelled that contract exactly of the people exactly. who drove out exactly. the they understand exactly. so you have to understand the country you have to understand it very well we are just hoping that uh we have patriotic patriotic leaders who are going to say yes this is nigeria because if we don't have people like that then we are turning into somalia where uh there are warlords so, all over the country so find certain places so um mr macri so what you're saying is that there is huge complicity within our leaders and even the security apparatus of the country in this issue of insecurity in our country that's what it, uh, oh, that's yes. what this means oh yes there's complicity forget about terrorism let's go back to other things you know one of the one of the root causes of insecurity in Nigeria is uh, poverty, unemployment, and stuff like that. You know, and now think about it: we have these problems waiting to be solved, and then we have legislators who know about this problem because they are supposed to be the representatives of the people. Now, instead of solving that problem, they are busy sharing money, buying uh, 160 million uh, uh, SUVs and stuff like that. What does that tell you? They are not serious about the problem. They are not serious about the problem. So these are the issues we have to look at. So um, as, a, as a security expert, sir, I'd like to know, um, how how do we move out of this entire trap or cocoon? I don't want to call it quagmire because I don't even know what to describe it as. It's scary because real human beings are dying. Real lives are lost. People are actually scared of act going about their daily routines or activities. How do we leave this situation? What is the way out? If there's complicity, as you have said, and if we're more or less helpless, in spite of the huge revenue that we've allocated yearly, to insecurity in the country and it seems like it gets worse by the day what then do we do what we need to get out of this is a patriotic leader how do we get that patriotic leader with the kind of i mean you know our situation how do we get well, that you know right now we have a new government we have a new government uh, we have a new government and of course he has been talking trying to you know 
uh, as compared to the former president, you know, this president is somebody who talks and, and uh, try to interact with the people. Not like Buhari where uh, everybody, even his own ministers, are trying to understand or interpret his body language. Hmm. You know, uh, that is not with this particular one. And because he talks, he has a lot of stake. This particular president has a lot at stake. And because of that, he has to do something about it. And if he can do something about it and get, you know, this security situation uh, under, under, under proper uh, control, and then I think Nigerians are going to praise him forever. Because what we have here looks like you called it quagmire. Actually, that's what it is. It's a quagmire, you know, where uh, to get out of it is a big problem. All right, Barry, so darling Singh, um, let me quickly get your reaction from everything that um, um, Mr. Dennis has revealed to us, Mr. Macri has revealed to us. The first thing to getting out of this place or this thing we are in is a strong judiciary. Apart from a leadership that is very focused, we need a strong judiciary. Unfortunately, precious, our judiciary has been compromised. Oh, wow. With what is going on. That is why this is going to be difficult too. The former chief of Army Star Borota, he told you that this is a 20-year campaign. He said it. That this thing will last for 20 years. That means there is an agenda that they are not telling us. That is why if you check very well, most lot not only that the way they talk about this thing, you don't even see any you don't see them being very vehement, very forceful about this insecurity. They just see it as if it's normal. Meanwhile, they are the, the hardest hit. They are not bothered. But when it comes to power, you will see them, they will flare up. Remember when Tulu uh, wanted to go and remove somebody in uh, Niger? You saw how they came out. That the people there are their cousins. You should not touch them. Oh. <laughs> Can you imagine? In yes. Niger, oh. what concerns you with Niger? That but means but we, we have a railroad leading to Niger. We're yet to have one from Abuja to Enugu State. Good. Instance, that will so. tell you that their loyalty is not here. Precious. I wish some people will go deeper. I've been in show. These people, they never wanted Nigeria. In, in 1957, we were supposed to have independence before Ghana. They told us they are not ready. They said it. The Sardana told the uh, Azikiwe and the uh, Awolowo that they are not ready. That they can go on. I don't know why Azikiwe and Awolo had to wait for them till 1960. Even after 1960, when we got independence, go and Google what the Sardana said. On the, I think, on the 12th of October 1960, on Nigerian pilot, how the man described Nigeria, he said that it is their heritage given to them by their forefathers. That what is Nigeria? That is how he described it. The entire Nigeria. Uh, I am telling Mr. you, Mister Mister Macri, are you aware of that kind of revelation? I said, uh, I have written about it. Well, the, he said it. The original <laughs> Nigerian the original pilot. Jihadist. Okay. The original jihadists have. Uh, a different opinion about what this place is ah. you know and then of course some statements which are documented exactly have been written whereby some people say that they have to dip the quran in the in the in the in the in the, in the atlantic ocean what does that mean it means that the whole from the north <laughs> down exactly. to the south exactly. you know will be yes. part of islamized exactly. uh, president uh, olushegu of asanjo have said it about a plan to Islamize Nigeria. Do you believe that's a real thing? Are, these are all facts that are there. Look, because a lot of people have the opinion that you know all of these um, headers, farmers issue, banditry, and all that is a subtle sign of the this this particular cause. Do you agree? It's not a subtle sign. It's a jihad that is active. There's a, an active, ongoing jihad in Nigeria. Good. 
you know, that's my analysis. Exactly. You, you, you know, you are well, you are well on public radio, so you know uh-huh. it's totally your opinion. But you're sure that it's something you can defend if the authorities uh-huh. come for you. Well, do you need when any? I when I when I when I assert any point, I tell you where to find it out. <laughs> you know, these are public. These are open source. They have said it themselves. What are you doubting again? This is yeah. open source information. You know, don't worry about your radio. Whether you uh-huh. think. Uh, when when down. when they when, can verify these facts that are there in the open space. Good. When uh, the Benue State Governor Autumn, when he started the the uh, anti grazing law, the Mietiala leader came out openly and said that unless this man remove that thing, that they are going to invite their people all over Africa and they will make that state ungovernable. Before the camera, he said it. Is that not what happened? And and by the way, that same crisis is the reason why we have over twenty five people dead good, right now in Kogi good. State as a result of a spillover of the Agatu, um, um, you know, farmer header community issue. Eh? So um so um Mr. Dennis Amakri, let me take you straight to uh, Taraba State where Wadume's return is being celebrated. You do know the case of Wadume very well that has led that led to the death of um you know uh, security agencies, uh, security of officials in this country and another a compromise by one other security agency in nigeria and um, the fact that he's giving just a very short time to serve concerning all that is surrounding him um do you think that his celebration by his people is very apt well um and do you think Dalitin justice was has, done too that that lady has said it already that if we want to get out of all these problems we have to uh, have a strong judiciary, you know, and then uh, you find out that even before the laws that uh, control kidnapping were not much, I think a year, six months or a year or something like that. And now they said, Oh, it's some place, let it be a death sentence, let it do this, that. Now, Wadume has been in jail and he was jailed for seven years, so he has completed, and then of course, he has to come out. That's the rule of law, you know. The judge has given his judgment. And then, of course, as the judge pleases, uh, that's the situation. All right, but it's a thing. Mm-hmm. The, Concerning the Wadume issue. It is not enough that Wadume came out. What I'm asking, what are other surrounding issues? Like uh, the army captain, Tijani Balarabe, who was supposed to, in fact, he was even the chief corporate in this matter because the death of those, uh, the death of those uh, policemen, I mean, IG, IG crack team, Five of them who went to arrest uh, Wadume. Wadume. It was that uh, Tijani Balarabe that caused their death. Because he ordered his men at the checkpoint to fire their vehicle. And when they demobilized the vehicle, they still went there. Instead of saying, okay, you gentlemen, you can go back to where you're coming from. We have nothing to do with it. This is our man. They did not do that. He had to shoot them. Direct, direct hit. And all of them were killed. And they removed Wadume from their midst. With handcuffs, mm-hmm. he now took them into a bush where he called the weather to cut off the handcuff they placed on him, and the man was released. Eh? During the investigation, it was discovered that there was a phone call going on between Wadume and this uh, Balarabe Tijani. The police said, Hand this man over to us so that we can prosecute him with the judge. They said, No, they are going to take him to their barracks and uh, court martial him. From there, this man went on a uh, course up to today. That was how that man escaped justice. I mean, the chief, the chief suspect in this matter, a military officer. Those men, they kid, they have father, they have wife, they have children, they have brothers and sisters. Nobody, nobody talking about them. All because of what? Tijani Balarabe, who is a very good ally of uh, Wadume. It was discovered there was 192 phone calls between these two, even while investigation was going on. Eh? Everything was pointing at this man called a Tijani. Instead of the military to hand him over for proper trial, they took him and, and sent him out of uh, uh, out of Nigeria for a course. Are you telling me that this man was not working with a high-ranking military officer for him to have gotten this privilege? Eh? These people they killed now because of what that man did. Who owns them? I don't know human beings. I don't know Nigerians. But when they were making, uh, killing people in uh, Okwama, that their men were killed. 
People were, you know, supporting them. These other people have been killing extrajudicial I don't know human beings. I don't know. That is the question Nigerians should be asking. Waduma is out now. Every other thing about that matter is over. The policemen that died, nobody talking about them. Even at that, the IGP raised another thing. Who arrested Waduma somewhere before he started uh, going through trial? Oh. The military released him to get out of Nigeria. For one reason or the other, the man went to go and enjoy himself somewhere in Canada, where the police picked him up. You can imagine. So, within that period, pressure, did you notice that there was no kidnap within that area? Did that be community where Wadume was holding court? Now that he's back, are you sure he will not go back to his business? Because of the way he was celebrated. I said the entire community was shut down to welcome him. A criminal. Precious, a criminal. All right, um, Mr. Tennis Makrisa, let's let's have your parting shot on this so that I can let you go. My my listeners are itching to jumping on the conversation. We usually open phone lines, and my phone lines are already buzzing. They're itching to jumping on the conversation. So let, let's have your concluding concluding thoughts, sir. Yeah, you know, um, I, I when I joined the uh, security services, I was schooled for more than a year on patriotism. Mm -hmm. And that's why we love this country. We see it as our own. And then, of course, all the people during our class, uh, we have everybody from every state. You know, people from every state were in our class. Until today, we are like brothers and sisters. Hmm. You know, and, irrespective uh, of tribe and state, right? Or religion? Yes, even. irrespective of tribe and state or religion. Today. Awesome. You know, that our cause mates. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the same thing in the military before. Uh, so uh, we see each other as brother, and there must be a patriotic favor. Because for a, for a country like Nigeria to progress, there must be serious patriotism. Here in the United States, people are proud of their country. I'm telling you. And we should be proud of our own country, you know. Where you will uh, arrest arrest uh, an American citizen, and the first thing he will tell you is that he's an American citizen. You know, I don't know how many of us will be we bold will enough to say, say no. I mean, Nigerians. In fact, if you say that because of the way that uh, Nigerians, some Nigerians have spoiled the name of the country, you better not say it because when you say it, you are compounding your yeah, own problem. problem. That's the truth. So I think we should be more patriotic. We need a patriotic leader. And then, of course, the institutions of government must be strong enough, you know, to withhold this country. All right. Do you believe that is going to happen in your lifetime? Just to, just my final question. Oh, yes. It could happen in my lifetime. Thank yes, you. I believe Thank you. that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. So, um, Mr. Dennis Macri um, is a former deputy director of the DSS. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. I called you in a very short notice and you obliged me. It means so much to me. Thank you Thank so Thank you much. very much for having me. Thank you. All right, mm -hmm. Lagos Barista Darlington. Yes. There's a whole lot to talk about still. Um, mm -hmm. You know, She Husani is telling President Buhari um, Tinubu to stop letting people come and visit him in private jets with people's money with the public funds. You should just tell them to stay where they are and utilize public funds for public purposes. Uh, what do you have to say about that? He will, he, will not, he will not even listen to him because uh, Tinubu like a crowd to be around him. You, you know, yes, he like people to come and, uh, you know, show solidarity. Is there any time he's coming to Lagos that uh, <coughs> the airport is not uh, <coughs> filled with activities? He has stopped the convoy from uh, airport to his uh, body long home. Uh -huh. But the airport, uh, this thing, that one is uh, sacrosanct. People must be there to dance or one better welcome here. Okay, so just a good breaking news. We hear that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has recovered 30 billion naira in the ongoing investigation of suspended Minister of Humanitarian Affairs mm -hmm. and Poverty Elevation, Better You Do, and former Chief of Executive former Chief Executive Officer of the National Social Investment Program Authority, mm -hmm. Halima mm -hmm. Shehu. And we also hear that so far the EFCC says it's investigating about 50 bank accounts. You know, we've been asking how far better you do now, President mm -hmm. Boy, President Tinubu says, step aside. Mm -hmm. Let's do investigation. And so how far? How far? So Pre EFCC has given us updates. They are working. Precious. Sir? It was it not in this country that they told you that between 2015 and 2023 or so, all the money that EFCC was supposed to recover, that is no record of them. True or false? 
Eh, true or false? So what are you celebrating and jubilating? That is the last you will hear about that money. Oh. <laughs> if you think that... So, but, but Mr. Dennis, <laughs> um, Mr. Dennis told us to be very um, patriotic about our country. You don't sound like you're very patriotic, like... You're, my dear, you're hopeful that we're my dear, right. listen very well. I have read history of countries who are patriotic. They did something before before patriotism came. With the way Nigeria is now, patriotism is far from all of us. No Nigerian can be patriotic with the way this country is being run now. Don't deceive yourself. Except there is a paradigm shift. Except to something happen that will realign our sense of reasoning that will bring up new leadership in this country. There cannot be patriotism the way things are going, whereby you'll be selecting who to prosecute and who not to prosecute. You'll be selecting who to give, give privilege and who not to give privilege. Okay. How can the country work? All right, thank you. Let's open phone lines. Uh, Nigerians are eating to jumping on the conversation. Lagos phone lines are now open. Let's begin to take your thoughts and reactions. In case you're just joining us, we've had quite an interesting conversation. So we started with the story of Edo State. Why would he tell you that? Um, after, of course, the impeachment of the Deputy Governor of Edo State today, Philip Shaibu, Edo State um, Governor Obasaki swears in Omobayo Marvelous Godwin as Shaibu's replacement as a new Deputy Governor of the state. And then... Shaibu, uh, Shaibu rather, uh, you know, spits, spits hot and says, I'll fight this injustice uh, because of the impeachment, right? Uh, so, yes. And then we also did tell you, um, we, we narrated the security issue in Nigeria. We really chronicled, you know, a few of the current ones. Gunmen abduct ex-militant leader, Igberi Igbe Papa, killed two aides. And of course, uh, update to that conversation is the fact that the police says, has confirmed that uh, abduction as an arrest by a sister agency. Uh, Kogi community buries 25 victims of banditry. We also did tell you that terrorists kill killed army lieutenant, uh, wounded four soldiers in Bur uh, Bur Buratai ambush. Uh, this is according to the defense headquarters as they clarify and says, oh no, they didn't keep plenty of army officers. It's just one, just one, just one that died there. Mm -hmm. Reintegrating terrorists into society dangerous. Ex-soldiers tell federal government, that is retired soldiers, tells federal government. Mixed reactions as Taraba kidnap kingpin Wadume gets heroic welcome after jail term. Interesting, right? We also did tell you that court declines to relocate Binance executive Tigran Gambarian from Kujay prison to EFCC custody. They say stay where other people will commit crime. They stay in a prison day. Stop government officials from spending public funds on private jets to visit you for Salah. She Husani tells President Bola Metinubu Zamfara. Don't spare anybody involved in kidnapping banditry group to governor lawal uh, you do recall that governor lawal has always been he's actually been on federal government about the banditry issue in the state all right uh better you do scandal fighter billionaire recovered 50 bank accounts under investigation efcc says so lagos these are the hot topics that we have yes, let's sir, begin sir. to take your thoughts and reactions sir. Please, before sir? you take that thought <laughs> what is wrong if nigerian government even tunubu government now call those who brought about this insecurity and bring them to book because we know them now. We, are the, we, have seen their, we have seen their statement. We have seen their actions. What is wrong if we now say, Mr. Man, why did you go and call terrorists to come into this country? What is your, what is your purpose? What are you pursuing? I mean, prosecute them because the evidence is there in the open. Prosecute them. Send them to jail. But because nobody has told them, to even I called their name, that is why they are still proud. Erufa is threatening to take Tunubu to court. For what? After what you have done. Precious, sir? are you sure we are, we have a country? Hold on. Are you sure we, we have a country, we, sir? Please. We that have a that is non negotiable. We, we have, have a country. Sir. You have a country, and you now want to invite terrorists to come and occupy your country. And that is still according eh? to. According to what? Is it not? Are you not seeing it? Hold on. Is it not obvious? Didn't you hear what? You really read what one of them said here. How can you be a patriotic person and you brought terrorists into your country? Deliberately carry out. Look, do you know that for you to be called a communist in America is the highest crime? For you to be called a communist, eh? To tell you how they cherish their their their, their government, their part, their type of democracy. But you hear somebody because of power, you went to go invite terrorists. Uh, and that is what here. Kawu Baraje said. But that is what he said. Is it not what you are seeing? And uh, he said that long ago, sir. No, it is good. Had they left? These people that are killing Nigerians without any mercy, are they Nigerians? Please answer me. Are they Nigerians? 
Why is it that whenever you want to be harsh on them, somebody will come out and say no? Eh? Somebody is telling you if you are because if you if you are anybody who will attack this bandit, eh, we will not vote for him because they are our they are our boys. Is that not what Shegumi have been saying? And these are people who claim to be Nigerian, so who claim to love this country, oh, and yet nobody but, have called them to book. But, but if anything, if what Kaubara just said is anything to go by, and if it's true, just like um, you know, uh, Mr. Dennis Amakri had said, the former DSS boss, do you not now think that they have a legitimate concern? Because uh, about what? What concern? I don't understand. Legitimate what? Concern. And uh, those who, who fight for them also may have a you know, legitimate concern for my fighting dear, for them. There is no legitimacy in bringing terrorists into this country. In no, I mean the people who feel used and dumped. In what way? Hey, you that brought them. That, you didn't hear me. You that brought them. You that brought them. For what purpose? Okay. That is the question. Barry, so that Why would you phone, do that? Because phone, you want to gain power. Phone lines are open. Nigerians eh? are itching to jump in on the conversation. And you still have to mouth to talk Z about Nigeria. 0700-903-903-903. That's the number to call. That is 0700-903-903-903. The other line to call is 0817-175-6338. That is the WhatsApp line. 0817-175-6338. It's the WhatsApp line. Hello, good evening to you. Welcome. <coughs> Yeah, hello, Precious. Oh, Mr. Chukudi, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, Precious. Sir? Yeah, that's for April. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ma'am. Good evening. Good evening, Tony. Good evening. You see, you see, you, you see, you see, Precious. Mm. You see, Precious. He's not telling Precious how to do his, his, her job. Mm. But I don't know why Precious always wants to uh, prove. I just sent a text me a, a message to, mm. to her. Uh, prove, she's, she's prove, doing her work. Prove. She's doing her work. Yeah, she's doing her work. Mm. But somebody, you call an expert, a, a former DSS, mm. who knows every single loophole or everything in the, in the, in the, in the, that has to do with the... Uh, okay, let's say the... He knows uh, more, a little bit, or more about the. So uh, your calling is just to come and batch me. It's not because you want to contribute uh, to your calling uh, is to come and lambast uh, me. And he has that asking that man, so, pre pressure, sir, pressure, sir? something that is in the public domain, mm. and you are asking. So I should not proof. ask again for qual qual clarification. Yes, now she have to ask. It's my job to ask I again for clarification. Is in the public mm. domain. It's okay, but I will see. Ask that yeah. is in the public domain doesn't mean that everyone is privy to it. You don't know that. Tony, I will ask. It's my job. Let her ask the question. I'll answer. It's my job. Ah, I'll answer her. If she asks me, I'll answer her. Oh, God. Mm. That, that, you, you, that you, information you, is open you, to me you, does not mean that you, it's open you look, to every other person. You, you look good this Monday. No, I'm not, I'm not and looking then good you are trying to Come and be going. <laughs> I'm not looking good. After collecting, yeah? after so, collecting uh, your sack. <laughs> <laughs> why, is on, why is on the step down? Thank you. I will let you know. I, I come and go. Let me pick calls. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Bye. Hello, Thank good you. evening to you. Okay, Thank yeah. you. Hello, good evening. Hello. Yes, you're welcome. Good evening, Gretchen. Yes, please. Thank I'm you. Mr. Well Thank done. you. What's your name, please? Yes. I'm Zubita calling from Ikorodo. Your name is Peter calling from Ikorodo. I'm Zubita calling from Ikorodo. Oh, Zubita calling from Ikorodo. You're welcome. Go ahead. Go ahead. Very quickly. We'll have a lot yes. of calls to take. Yes. Thank you. So, I have to hit on that about the insecurity. Mm. I thought that uh, this country is called the giant of Africa. Mm. But I'm ashamed to say that we, the giant of Africa, are no more the giant of Africa. Mm. We are not the giant of uh, borrowers, the giant of kidnappers. I don't know what to say about this country. Become a joke. Every day by the way, someone can hear good news about this country. Or every time we'll be fed up with bad news. Sorry. Sorry. I don't know. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate you. Thank you. Sorry. Eh? Mm. Sorry. I understand. So, Barry, so that there's someone challenging you mm. uh, on the um, comment session. The person said that you're lying about it, that it was Azikiwe that was the man that stood against independence. Ah. <laughs> hey, God Almighty. I just that, said I should read your message to you. Fact, Let me go back to my phone line. The, Sorry. Person, the person doesn't know his history. Okay. Hello. Good evening. <laughs> yeah. Good evening. Uh, <laughs> precious. <Sha? laughs> Yeah, uh, God Darlington, good evening. Good Precious, this is C2. C2. Calling from C2. C2, you're welcome. Go, go ahead, very quickly, uh, please. Yeah, Precious, I, I don't know. Uh, were you were you been in Nigeria uh, 
Did, did you just come back or you've yes. been outside nigeria i just, I just came back please. i just came, no, came back. back go ahead please oh okay okay all right uh, if i have to say now you say me are you acquiring you are not being honest to yourself hey. to be honestly this is an you are not being now. honest go out tell your word say what you want but to say to if i was the one who is telling you that buari says if if what happened in 2011 happened in 2015 dogs and babu we soak in blood you will cut me off no but thank god for that our honorable man that said it uh, that we have a... every of his utterance we have it but let me say something they can release the terrorists or the or they like my problem i'm having today is that they are using the southeasterners the the eastern politicians to kill our own people that's just my own being All my right. problem thank you that has thank been you where thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so you. much i appreciate you thank you very much so that mm. we can just go straight to the point i appreciate you thank you lambas me for all you can care or it's okay mm. it's fine hello good evening to you hello good evening precious yes, sir you're welcome <laughs> my name is shola shola I'm you're calling from uh Ebeda. shola you're welcome go ahead please yeah, go thank ahead. you very sad, uh, very, very sad i agree you sir well done my brother Okay, yes. Um, you know, uh, he's talking about um, the release of uh, Wadume. Yes, please. Yeah, this is not a surprise. It only shows the the level of uh, moral decadence of Nigeria. It is not the first time. Was it not uh, which governor the other time? How many governors that were being prosecuted mm. and when they would left prison? Mm. They were celebrated. They were, yeah, the we we don't them. tell ourselves the truth. You understand? If what is bad is what is good to people now. You see the way people defend what is bad. And how do you expect this country to move forward? We are not being sincere. And just like somebody was asking, maybe by Sadar Linton, he was asking if Nigeria is a nation. Nigeria is not a nation. I'm telling you, many things need to be assessed. We are not sincere with ourselves. We are just joking and playing around. Nigeria is a we nation. You know your public radio. It is Nigeria not a nation. A nation. Thank, Thank you, nation. you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. All right. So um, let me go to YouTube now where I begin with some messages. Truman Thinkwell says, I'm watching you people from Somalia. Well done. No. Leo Akodjer says, uh, Barista Darlington is a no-nonsense barista. Away. David uh, says, oh, David, we'll look into that. Uh, Can I see cases? The pressures, uh, they have tagged team. He said what? They have tag teamed you today, Barista Darlington and um, you know Mr. Dennis and Macri. Thank you. Emmanuel also says they brought those terrorists to fight Jonathan, but uh, it did not uh, as it did not work as a plan. Exactly. LCD says see as present a fold and he's shock. <laughs> he's shock up. <laughs> <laughs> and me and I analyze like this. Wow, wow, wow! Great revelations. Ken Ezike says there. Okay, and uh, Tree Mix Engineering Services is the one that said that thing it said about you. He says you get all your ethno okay, okay. What? William, so, so no, what? no, 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 it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Barista no, it's not for you. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And uh, William says as long as the uh, a certain community are not angry about current what's happening with the insecurity in the country, they are the same in Gaza and Nigeria anywhere. Jessica Becky says, "Good evening, precious and Barista Darlington. Oil and water can never be." Uh, be one that's what you said mm -hmm. innocent okoye says good evening precious i'll gather links in please uh my uh, um he, he said okay please what uh my name is Naimeka from Egypt, but i want the meaning of the name nigeria okay okay ngozi on what says precious apc new humanitarian minister thank you <laughs> insecurity uh william mas says insecurity tinubu is a southern muslim so he probably cannot do so much i maintain man says apc invited terrorists to chase jonathan out really okay all right um where do i get to to, to this again and um okay uh tim malik says by suddenly this this your tie now one in town no mm. see uh, innocent okoye says um Nigeria precious, in nigeria we have two citizens <laughs> one wants to see the country work the others want the other uh, the, the, the other one doesn't want to see the country work so mm -hmm. we choose what we belong to so let mm -hmm. me go to whatsapp now because my whatsapp box is so full okay phil in a says good evening uh barista darlington should stop uh putting out wrong information to the public he said p2b didn't impose anybody on anambra people when leaving office that he finished mm -hmm. his term and left without putting anyone uh, in his stead yes he didn't impose but yeah. asked uh he said what but asked what darlington who brought to Biano? Can you imagine? You so. Do you know? Okay. Look, okay. I, look, I, uh, look, encouraging somebody to take over from you is different from selecting somebody and impose it on your state. What exactly is these people talking about wrong people? Okay, so Barista Darlington, I have one since, message. Uh, since you'll uh, be left uh, Anambra, please.
Prince, have you seen him? Uh, throughout Obi Anon's tenure, did you see Obi go there to talk or, or say anything about Obi Anon? That is what happens when you impose somebody. You'll be dictating for him what to do and what not to do. All right. Ah. So um, this says deadly notorious kidnapper ah. Wadume has been released from prison after serving four years because he is a he's not a christian after serving only four years and i wish him good luck for his kidnapping business uh same binta iako that sentenced uh deadly notorious kidnapper wadumi for seven years imprisonment is holding innocent in namdekano that committed no crime and i want to tell you that uh disintegration of okay mm. all right mm. okay um yeah uh this says uh this happened in uzawani um adani local government we will advocate for blood for blood we are really for blood what we are really angry our uh, people are ready to oh wow okay you don't have to apologize this is calm. The, what the way government is doing it, it can it, it can be provocative uh, very, very 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 apologies. provocative actions uh, apologies let yeah? me just kindly run through the messages uh this says your new guest has really poured everything out to be honest with you former pmb really done more than uh, more harm to nigeria than good the monsters he invited in the name of election is what we are suffering today and it's getting worse every day it's unfortunate that buhari's system is still in vogue and i don't see this government doing anything tangible to eliminate those monsters it is uh, very bad and sad and everything look everyone looks helpless but um his right hand is missing local sent in that um if them explain nigeria to you and you can't understand that that means say uh, you you, you uh, they know explain that word to you usman from yaba sent in that really i'm so tired of the issues of insecurity in nigeria because we are not telling ourselves the truth even the military are not telling themselves the truth that's why we still have these issues all the time can you go from festive town good evening precious in darlington it shall be well with your guest in the studio they nailed the issues on her uh, uh, you know on the head right all the expose that both of them have revealed on the insecurity are nothing but the truth our leaders are simply not patriotic enough a time will come that will savage ourselves from their claws as for shaibu's impeach shaibu's impeachment he didn't play his game well so he should lick his wound jerry sahid barawa sent in that message okay all right um where is that this beautiful pressure is for you she will never agree she will always ask for proof and verification someone your guest in the studio is telling you something that uh in, that is in the public domain you are asking for proof good evening my beautiful precious eh hey, tony chukudi well done after you having me put beautiful on top there the yab eh ick jima from amokoko says sister precious on ogada linkedin talking of patriotism how patriotic is a constitution been giving the constitution that we have that is the constitution that is governing us gongo how patriotic is it okay going back to the phone lines my message box is full my phone lines are buzzing like crazy forgive me i don't even know where to start from hello good evening to you yeah. my sister precious sir my brother welcome waiting be your name brother no, well, no guess time yeah i want to my name is evangelist i want to get my two brothers Mm. Uh, Dr. Uh, and uh, Minister Macri, Chabi? Yeah. Macri, I'm Yeah. Uh, Dennis and Macri. Two, two, two men I respect so much. Thank you. I respect them too much. Yeah. You see, like, what, actually, as an economist, I'm writing a, a piece. I started it this morning, which I'm going to publish very soon, maybe by two days' time. When I heard, when the news broke out, I will do men have been released. I was not wondering. You remember a few weeks ago in Delta State when our Ghana military, about 17 of them were Mogadi? It's like I was were let, let loose. All of us condemn me because these are our military personnel. But what happened to those guys, those security personnel, those police officers, special squad that, that went and arrested the uh, Wadumen? That, that, that were slaughtered, that yes. were killed, murdered mm. by those military guys. What mm. happened to their family? I wonder. What happened to their family? So mm. those guys, now, they, they, those guys that died like that, mm. what happened to them? Their life is not pressure, it's not important, I mean. yes, And then uh, those soldiers that, 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 that did that, that committed that heinous you know, crime, mm. what happened to them to tomorrow? That, tomorrow? That, you hear anything again? But now the criminal has been released by our judges, by our courts. And the family, the people they are celebrating that in criminal activity. And uh, would you not want maybe the, for those in service now to be committed? Is that what you're saying? I wonder. See, if I may ask now, because of our reward system, 
if I may ask Nigeria and everybody listening to us now, who was the governor where the Chibo guests were, 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 were taken away? I didn't want to say they were kidnapped. We're taken away. Who was governor? He's your vice president. He's the vice president. That means Nigeria rewarded Chibo. Mm. No, no people misbehave. We give that reward. If I may ask again, I never see any school that promotes a, a student that takes promotion exam. Why do we keep promoting people that thing? Somebody that was uh, no power as a governor and a got the security for that it's not safe. Those students you know you know Thank you. Exam there. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate yes, you. Yes, I was like no, you know that the principal then was made meta made as commissioner. Exactly. In that sense, exactly. that, that's a government for competing with them, yes. What what China, what, what are we sending? What message are we sending? Yes, the woman was promoted. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello. Good evening to you. Yeah. Good evening, Pre uh, Precious and uh, uh, Mars Dalent. This is uh, this is uh, uh, Mr. Richard from Germany. You're welcome. Uh, Go ahead, you please. know about about these bandits. Let me tell you the truth. We are lying to ourselves. Nigerians are, are that is hypocritical. Like Mohammed told you guys that these people are. Have bandits. They can't arrest them. They can't uh, them because they are not fighting. They are just uh, criminals. Mm. They are not like IPOB. Mm. IPOB mm. is fighting to to uh, separate from Nigeria. Mm. But the bandits are just ordinary criminals. Mm. Lai Mohammed said it severally, yes, and no journalist attacked. No, you know, attacked him or asked him why. Uh, Erufai said the same thing, and they got away with these things. That is why. These people are doing what they're doing today. Wadume is free. 20 months. I, I just, 20 months, he spent 20 months in the prison. Evans that committed the same crime is on 21 years mm. imprisonment. Evans. Evans, 21 years. Ndume, 20 months. Yes. One, yes. Nigeria, one Nigeria, right? Exactly. Then Boko Haram. Boko Haram have been killing innocent Nigerians. I lost a, a, a village guy. When they were active, when, when Boko Haram was active in Jaws, his wife, Basil and Ephemia, they were murdered in Jaws. In Jaws, Boko Haram. Their children are now orphaned. But Boko Haram, Boko Haram are today working freely in Nigeria. One Nigeria for us, right? Okoma, this village in Delta State, has been occupied. The, 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 the king is still in detention. Yeah. While somewhere in, in Zamfara, they banned somebody who was who is still a criminal, who is still killing people. Nobody is arresting that Emir. One Nigeria, right? And then you look at you you look at our, uh, uh, an evil king in Lagos State. Just mentioned if you don't want to protect us, let IPOB come and protect us. And he's still in detention one year after. And Chef uh, uh, Gumi is going no, everywhere, no. posting with the terrorists, posting with them, telling Nigerians to come and you know, share with them. Nobody has arrested Sheikh she Gumi, right? One Nigeria, right? And finally, today's afternoon, this afternoon, a, prof a prophet was on this radio telling Ibos why Ibos should should wait uh, that God told him when it will be time for Igbo people to rule Nigeria. You see us, you see how hypocritical Nigerians are? You see how how, how hypocritical that uh, it was still it is Tinibu after that Tinibu will make a way for Igbo man uh, the, with, uh, to come and rule Nigeria. A prophet. A prophet. God bless you guys. All right, I appreciate you for speaking, but um, there is actually no need to, you know, speak um, in any manner to, you know, react in such a manner to anybody's, um, his, his opinion. He has a right to his opinion. I didn't listen to that conversation, but it's totally his opinion. I, I agree. Um, so he has a right to his opinion. Hello, good evening to you. Yeah, good evening, Madam Precious. Sir? Good evening, Madam no, make no, welcome. Go ahead very quickly, After please. your message, you're not yeah, yeah. Uh, the, I want to find out from the, the Christian society this, mm. who have two uh, different citizens. The other one wants to build the nation, to see the nation work, to, 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 to join 
among the human race in the world. But the other ones don't really want to see that. The only ones want to kill and destroy whatever we are doing. And I ask a question. Is it a nation in this? And, uh, and another thing, the reason why I call again is, is please, I want to know the meaning of Nigeria. The All name right. Nigeria. That is why I call. Thank you, people. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Hello. Good evening to you. Where is Flora Shaw? Hello. Precious. Good Sir? evening. Good evening. Good evening, Barrister Darlington. Well done. Yeah, my name is Joval. Precious. Mm -hmm. The one of the best things to happen this evening were the two gentlemen, perfect gentlemen that we had as guests this evening. The DSS um, person and Barrister Darlington, our usual ma. So the other person that called quickly, we have prophets of Baal in the Bible and have prophets of God. Maybe that prophet that came on air was speaking for another prophet, not from God. That aside, I know that some people will not be happy about all the analysis that were dished out this evening. And those people will try as much as possible to try and refute those wonderful analysis with all the evidences presented. Just like the other man who called from Germany, he was mentioning facts. We were all hearing it. One thing is very certain. If uh, this country will want anybody to be loyal, as in for us to begin to support this country the way we want uh, the government to want us to support this country, it is very important that justice be done. What is good for the good should be good for the Ganda. If you imprison Wadume after four years, you are releasing him, you are letting him go, and you are imprisoning other persons and they are spending 21 years for the same type of offense committed, crime committed, then there's no justice. Automatically, that will make Nigerians not to be completely loyal and will bring about people asking, whether this country is a nation. Of course, this country is a nation, but we need to do something to make Nigeria look like a nation and be like a nation. As long as that is not done by this leadership or whoever is in the seats of power in Nigeria, we are not in anywhere. And it is so unfair that after some people will turn people to offer in this country, kill people mercilessly, abduct people, and demand money from this country. They are arrested by the military who are serving this nation. And what the government will do in return is to release them, set them free. And you want loyalty from those who are serving Nigeria. It is well precious. It is well. I'm not Thank happy about the way this country is run. So I think this government should do better. This government should do better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. All right. Let me go back to WhatsApp. Ah, first, I don't need to. My WhatsApp box is full. Oh, okay. So uh, let's see if we can do a few. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, all right. Minimum. Oh, let's, let's not even go there. All right. And this says, um, uh, Precious and now two superb guests. Good evening to you. And uh, my darling, pretty precious, as a and the other man has said, and explained to you tonight. Please stop skipping or interrupting some of our contributions. I beg and rest. Leave me alone, Joe. I'm doing my work. Especially when they said that they are so-called terrorists, terrorism, insurgents, terrorists, bandits, kidnappers, ETC, going on daily in Nigeria. Uh, killing Nigerians without sympathy or mercy are all about achieving two goals, which are Islamizing Nigerians and Fulanizing Nigeria. And Babiji from Ocean. Babiji, leave me alone. No, for me, Leo. Uh, if you remember when Okwama incident happened, I asked what would be the ripple effect of the military invasion and killing in those communities. Wouldn't it give birth again to militancy, breeding generation of angry youth who would grow to hate the military for what they have done? Look at the sudden release of Wadumi, a, a political thug a kidnapper and murderer and then uh, when he was arrested by the idp uh, team he was released by an army captain tijani balaraba who led soldiers of battalion 93 his men killed i'm coming to this message let me just pick this call eh? you you're giving us history hello good evening to you 
Hello, precious. Sir? How was your weekend? And my darling too. It was incomplete, but thank you for asking, Mr. sir. Allah from Chicago. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> yes, sir. Fine, thank you, sir. Are you on step down because, no, I used my phone when okay. I'm outside. No, no, not yet. Not, not, not yet. yet. Just a yet. little oh. time left. Mm. Oh, oh, okay. Mm. Okay, can I say something? Very quickly, please. First sir. of all, mm. first of all, do you remember, uh, God, I didn't think, do you remember the story of Lebanon? Mm. Lebanon was a Christian country. Your country, yes. Yes, yeah. before these people penetrate to that place. Yes, over the now place. Now it's, it's mm. thank you, it's ruling by Muslim now. Yes, by, yes. What I want to say, yes. Exactly. Yes. What I, yes. Yes. What I want to say now about Nigeria, if you are not careful, if you are not careful, it may be 100 years, maybe 200 years, mm -hmm. these people are going to take over the country. Exactly. Because, yes, those people that are injected to the military, mm. they are going to take over the, the, the system I'm telling and they you. take over the whole country. I'm telling Except you. we do something quickly. If not, we are going to run over by these people. That's the truth. Okay, okay, that yes, you okay, are very, are very yes. correct. You are very correct because how yes. do you bring a terrorist into your military? Precious, are you, yes. are you thinking what I'm thinking? And the Tunubu and the other people, they are seeing it. A terrorist, and you say he had repented because he swore with the Quran. That was the only condition. That's all. Eh? And okay, you're asking why this thing has okay, continued. Mm. Yes. We have to do something. Look, Nigeria is not the same country. What, what did the people do to Nigeria? What did they do? Uh, uh, Delta. The, the oil getting from Delta belong to Nigeria. The gold getting from Sanfara belong to Sanfara. Right. Now... Thank you, sir. My brother. Apologies. Thank fact, you, it's so good much. We say it so that Thank you, precious. Thank, thank you for giving me this time. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so it's much, good sir. we say it so that posterity will not judge us harshly. We have been saying it. There is something that is going on. We okay. just wake up one morning and discover that... Uh, <laughs> okay, Boris, so going back to that message, you said uh, when he was arrested by the IDP team, he was released by an army captain, Tijani Baralabe, who uh, led soldiers to battle in 93. His men killed the police officers even after they initiated, identified themselves yes, as officers. Yes, yes. We know that case. That was all over the news mm. then. Mm. Where is Balarabi today? Mm. Uh, he went on a course. Yes, no. A country where the military uh, is allied to crimin criminals. Wadume is released and celebrated by crazy people in his community, including youth and women, who would vote for Wadume if he comes out tomorrow ah. to contest for governor of Taraba yeah, State. Pure madness. Mm. This is a country. Uh, you keep asking your guests if their facts can be verified if you're a journalist do you close your eyes to this proofs in the news i don't close my eyes to news i like the way people are asking me the question and i'm reading it out so that you know you know that my judgment is fair eh? right thank you so much i appreciate you by the way barry sadalington so did you know break down a lot of that matter on um uh, wadume's case and he narrated he chronicled it totally on precious in your tv so you could go check that out later i mean that will be tomorrow morning uh good evening precious for me there is a difference between the killings in okwama and some other places in the north in okwama the killing was masterminded by the community youth and not bandits or terrorists who have no particular residence mm -hmm. mm. mm. precious why are you pretending like as if you don't know all these facts northerners are always saying this country belongs to them and that's why everything is lopsided army police and other security agencies usually take side anytime they kill any security agent in the south uh you said a lot to send it off from yourself mm. uh, please patriotic nigerians for this uh, country to uh move forward mr buhari should be questioned about uh, jail lifetime imprisonment for bringing terrorism in the country. He committed highest crime in the land. Ter terrorists uh, killing innocent Nigerians in the country. I'm calling for on President Tinubu to do the needful. Well, you said a lot. Pretty precious. A lack of patriotism from our leaders is the bane of our problem. We need to draw a line between governance and religion else. We will not make any progress our leaders need to understand what leadership and service is they need to stop leaving uh, all the sweat of the ordinary uh, off the sweat of the ordinary citizens uh francis chilaka sent in that message i appreciate you francis thank you so much hi precious i think i thank you for inviting mr dennis may god bless you on the kidnapping of terrorism amen hey let me receive that prayer one prayer out of all the curses i appreciate you god bless you that's refreshing i, I would have just skipped it i forgot how refreshing that is amen again uh, hi precious i thank you for inviting mr dennis may god bless you amen amen on the kidnapping of terrorists uh can you see how things in this uh, in this 
uh, the release of Waduna shows the level of in inequality in this in the handling of issues affecting the nation there will be no peace in nigeria until all the lopsidedness of the country is addressed now i know uh, that the north is more important than other segments of the nation mm -hmm. tosin williams from Ogo state sent in that precious even i actually wanted to tackle you seriously but uh, the way you answered and exercised patience made me rest my <laughs> well you expect me to be defensive hey don't make me laugh <laughs> Marisa, darling, so these people don't know <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> hey God. Uh you say I see you. Please continue to do good work. God bless you. KJL, are you safe? You be ready. You came with a with a full squad on me, eh? Okay. Um, Prince from Elasa says, Precious, please. I'm having a serious headache. Please fast forward to the step down. I'm going there, streets. I'm going there. Eh? Other countries are living in the future, but uh, here in Nigeria, we are going back to Egypt. Yeah, okay. So you said that. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's let's just round, round, round up with this call. Hello, good evening. Hello, Precious. Sir? Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Ah, Mr. Darlington, my man of the year. Good evening, sir. Hey. Yeah, Dayo, how are you? Dayo from Fagba. Fai, sir, well done. Ah, NPC spokes lady, well done. You go, good Dayo, thank you. <laughs> yes, uh -huh. now, like I used to say, there is this insecurity in Nigeria, mm. especially in the north. There is conspiracy of the government, the security uh, people, the army and the police, and also the northern elites and their uh, and their and their uh, kings i mean look look at look at where they have brought nigeria to especially when buari came into power and see now somebody says he will continue in buari's legacy and he's continuing it um uh, the what you call this man um uh, this um uh, this man is untouchable and uh, this this Gumi, northern uh, Gumi, Gumi, Gumi. Gumi, Gumi is untouchable you can see the conspiracy uh Aero 5 is, is, is untouchable. Un, uh, untouchable so you can see you know and even even these senators and governors they are untouchable they know about this thing they want it to end today it will end but you can see the conspiracy of governments and this thing that's why uh, we, we, are, we are in this nightmare is it not a shame? Now there is full scarcity in the north. I mean, full scarcity in Nigeria because of all these things. People cannot go to there's, farm. There's no they will kidnap them just, and, 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 and is, is it not a shame? <coughs> okay. Because I mean, no, look at no, where, no. where we, are, we are. We are in a mess, and this is we are, we are not up to a year now. Every everywhere is boiling. I mean, I, like I don't know where, where are we going in this country. And this man is still going three three years to come. Where will Nigeria be at mm. that particular time? Mm, that will be expendable. Eh? I mean, it's, it's very, very unfortunate. And they are saying he did. What did he do in Ogadaliti? Please, I want to ask. Now, can you rate these governors in Lagos from Jacon Bay to um, Marua to Fashola to uh, Tinumbuan? Because... He, they said he did everything in what did he do in Lagos I, now? I can't Sinubu, what did he do in I, Lagos? I, I don't know. What is this? What is you can read? No, let's 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 check it. And they are saying that come for debate so that people can assess you. But he didn't come and see what, what he has done to this country now. Yes, it's a shame. The worst, is, the worst of us is all right. Thank you so much, Dayo. Eh? Mm. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. you. Thank yeah. you so Precious. much. All right, Barista Dalins, you want to wrap up on that? We will have stepped down now, Precious. sir. Did you know that uh, Pakistan and Bangladesh came out of India? Are you aware? Yes. They were formerly part of, of uh, India. Yes. They came out of that place. Did you know why they left and why they went away? You know, look, there are certain things that are inevitable, no matter how long you delay it. Why do you think all these Western countries they try to treat their people very well. They provide for them. They make sure that they are comfortable. An American president can die for America. Go and watch Air Force One. That was where American president demonstrated what they stand for. Air Force One. Eh? Look at how they came here to release one person. One. One person. In kidnappers, then one. They selected the best of American elite uh, military secretary officers to come and release him. Precious, when will Nigeria start thinking forward for God's sake? 
this thing that we are talking now, do you think that, do you, do you know that this thing is getting, that is, is like we are not even saying anything because the people we are talking to, they are not making any improvement. They are not even, are as, as if you are talking to yourself. At least, by now, somebody supposed to be saying, okay, let us change. After eight years of Buhari, that we mess up everything. At least, let us start doing things that will be, well, you know, yeah, things are getting worse. Aerofa is, 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 is threatening to become president. Can you just imagine? Precious, our children are going to fight this war if we leave it. I'm not joking, no. Because this can, it can never happen. It cannot continue. But this cannot continue because nature, nature abhors a vacuum. Okay. We have created a vacuum for nature in this country and nature will take over. So all these people doing all these things, they should go and read history. I've been saying it, they then go and read history. There is a limit to everything. Even God, even God. There is a time he will say, okay, well, let Satan take over. Yes, now, when God has warned and what you don't know, he said, okay, Satan, I go and do your work. By that time, we start looking, ah, who caused this problem? Who did this? Now that we are saying it so that people will learn their lesson, nobody will hear. Nobody will hear. You think that this enslavement will continue, Abby? No, you think it will continue? Uh, let's see. All right, Lagos, let's take a break now. We're going straight to our step down conversation. So, Barista, that link in our step down conversation, eh? A Nigerian lady that lives in the UAE raises an alarm. Hmm. She says she's in Dubai hmm. as a single girl. And then she had a boyfriend who never told her he was married. And they got into coitus. And one thing led to the other. Stomach has entered. And the man is telling her, hurry up and go to Nigeria and give birth. My real wife is, com- my wife is coming. <laughs> and she's worried. She's confused. She doesn't know what to do. But I said, that means you that you're a lawyer now. How do we settle this matter like this? Uh, there, you because he never told her, I'm coming. I'll play her thoughts to you is, after the break. Is, said, you was, you know, is it a Nigerian or a UAE? Uh, when, 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 when I come back now, okay, that's who they say the matter. <laughs> Lagos, that's our step-down conversation. But after the break, stay with us. This is 90.3, Voice of the People of Earth. Listen to hot critical analysis and top trending topics of the day. Join Precious, Monday to Friday, 7 to 9 p.m. On. Job that earns me about... I moved to the UAE February 2022. I got a decent job that earns me about 3,000 dirhams and it's enough to take care of me. I am currently pregnant. It's actually an unwanted pregnancy, but right now I have no choice but to act like it's something that I want. The man that got me pregnant never told me he was married and he's insisting that I go back home to have my baby. But my problem is, I'm not sure that if I go back home, he will be taking care of the baby and I. Because right now, he's asking me to work until I can save enough money that can sustain me and the pregnancy until when the baby comes. My The main reason why I am so upset is when he approached me until we started dating, he never told me he was married from home. He never told me he had a wife and children in Africa. And right now that I'm already pregnant, it's now that he's telling me that he's actually bringing his wife to the UAE. Now that I'm pregnant, I need all the support I can get. So I cannot continue staying in the company accommodation. I need to stay with him. But for now that I'm with him, what if his wife finally comes? What am I going to do? And I still have a couple of months to work until I can go back home to have my baby. I never knew men in the UAE are like this. I never knew people were this cruel. I never knew when it comes to uh, a man that actually just wants you, that just wants to... Oh God, oh God, help me. I really don't, I really don't know what... All right, so Barita Darlington... See the matter we are, we have at hand now. Now, what do we now do? Lagos, that's a step-down conversation. Now. So to this sister now mm. that has raised this issue now, what should she do? Some people are saying that, oh, you know, there used to be a law in the UAE that you cannot actually have a child outside wedlock, wedding. But I think that law has been repealed. It's, it's off now. So in this situation now, is it fair that uh, he put her in the family way and he's telling her to exit quickly because his family is coming? What she should do because he still remains the father of the child she's carrying. And on the other hand, if this girl is a family member now, Barry Stalin what would you do? Hey, where is the man from? Is he a member? Is he he's a, a Nigerian. Oh, he's a Nigerian. Yes. Uh-huh. He's an African. He had when she said that she never knew that that's what African men do. Uh, and she too, she's from Africa. Yes. 
Uh -huh. So, what is the problem here now? The is problem it? is that he's telling her that she, she says that she's pregnant. She needs to move in with him because she needs all the supports. Oh. But the man is saying that, you know, go stay with me, oh, I beg. Uh, because my real wife is coming very soon. So, pack your load and be going. Uh, precious. Sir? There are some businesses you enter into. This is and, a business transaction. And you call it an occupational hazard. Away. <laughs> eh? Eh? Occupational hazard. Eh? Is there the 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 that man did he rape her? He lied to her that he wasn't married. He didn't tell her the truth about his marital status. And you didn't bother to find out. He never told her. That what I, you did not bother to find out. Well, he never told her. Eh, eh. Really? Eh, now that you have told her, eh, there's not no problem now. Oh, you mean because of that? That was why you now, you know, you didn't even bother to say, ah, if I get pregnant now, are we married? Did this man has he gone to pay my bride price? Did he do the necessary things? You just allowed him to get you pregnant and you are complaining. I mean, look at it yourself. I call it occupational hazard. It's as simple as that. I mean, if they are being friends, what is wrong there? Uh, the, the, the man the, the man is okay, get pregnant for me, I will take care of. Don't, no, so he no. has the right to tell her to leave his house that his wife is coming. Uh, but, look, and, and she should leave to where, Barry Sadalington? Where exactly? Look, you learn from what happened to others. Uh -huh. Ladies, you should learn. So now that this, she, not, she did not learn and uh, this has happened, what should, should she good. do? Uh, you can't eat your cake and have it now. So how can she not eat this cake now? That's that's uh, the question. If there, is, if there are laws in the UAE which she can approach, let her do that. That is it. If there are laws that governing uh, marital status, uh, they, and I know being Africans, they will even burn the two of them back in a hurry. You know those people they don't they don't even give you visa yes eh? they don't give you visa no, they don't give you um, eh, so you know, when you um, when they discover what you like they say eh, you want to come and pollute our environment or you make that they go that is it so if she cannot handle it then let her come back it's as simple as that because she can't even go to court she can't go to court in you do in, in dubai over this matter she cannot because if she tries it the, the two of them will be exposed now that she has come public with it already. Hey, that's what I'm telling her that they, they are, all this one, let her come back. That's the only thing okay. because okay. if the company throw her out of the company uh, accommodation, according to her, because very, what I like her, the, the pregnant will show. By the time the, the stomach starts uh, shooting up, what will, uh, can you hide it again? All right, Bryce, uh, let, let me let me let Nigerians jump in on this. You put yourself in problem, you put the boy in problem. Problem. Okay, uh, phone lines are open now. 0700-903-903-903. And 0817-175-6338. That's the WhatsApp line. 0817-175-6338. Hello, good evening. Good evening, precious. Jova, step down. You're welcome. Oh, yeah, Jova, sharp, 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 sharp. Politics. Sharp, sharp. I need to speak. It's okay. Okay, Jova, step down, politics. It's okay. Fine. Sometimes. You're welcome. Sometimes, precious. Sir? I become ashamed of some of your supposed gender. to be members of your whatsapp group my sisterhood mm, your gender uh -huh. sometimes uh -huh. i become ashamed of them yes uh -huh. why why exactly <laughs> how could you be dating someone from what i heard now they're not married i wonder and she opened her mouth to say that mm. she was not intending to be pregnant mm. That but now that she's pregnant, to, uh, which uh, means mm. somehow that she did not mention to us hearing, she wanted to be pregnant. Abby? She never wanted it. So she what should it. she do? We don't have plenty of time. Let me not just let's not dwell on it oh, because right, I wanted right, to ask you that you're not you're ashamed of the sisterhood, do? but you're not ashamed of your fellow brother who do lie to her that he was who didn't tell her the uh, truth uh, about uh, his uh, marital uh, status. To, to the, to the, uh, precious Sir? today's own mm. today's own mm. is your WhatsApp group member that I will blame. Mm. The other Thank time you. I blamed the other guy. Now. Okay, so it's okay. So you you, you, pray, you hailed this guy for not so, telling the truth about his marital status. He did a good job. No, no, no. Oh, what I'm saying, okay. what I'm saying is that is the lady down? the lady has tested the river with her both leg, and she has to drown. Okay, Ungwa, she thank you. tested the river with just one of her Thank you. Thank you. Thank you mm. so much. I thank appreciate it. Hello, good evening. Good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining you, you us. You have welcome. a good job. And I yes, my name is Shola. Shola, uh, where are you calling from? Calling from my brother. You're welcome. Brother. Yes, please. Yes. Go ahead. Okay, yes. Yeah, so, uh, it's a very painful situation, you know. I like to put myself in people's shoes. Hmm. You know, the women could be vulnerable. 
if mm-hmm. this were to be my sister, you know, how I won't be happy. So um, what I would just say is that um, the, the guy, you know, uh, played a fast one on her. And that is what leads to why some women can pay back in a wicked way. So for me, I would advise the lady, you know, because now she cannot just take any action. I would advise she should go and report. You understand? So that another thing is that they will want the DNA to be done. Well, at least she should report because that guy might want to even go away with her, you know, to keep his own family. So, well, and and, and she, did mention, she did mention that she's the only member of her family who has ever traveled. You see? So, you know, the guy, you can't eat your cake and have it. There and there should be a payback in a way, but she should be smart about it. Mm-hmm. You know, she, after some time, she, she should let the wife know. She should just surprise the man, you know, with, with that, with the baby. Maybe after the baby has been given birth. But now she should just go and take care of herself and lay low. But Thank there you. should be a Look payback. At- Thank you. A girl who is earning that kind of money. Thank is you. It not, is, is it not supposed to be comfortable? But, but said, that that, so because she's comfortable, she, her body should not do her anyhow. Was she? Was it not the man that came to her? No, the queen man now. So <laughs> if do do anyhow, uh-huh. don't you have your safe period? What is safe? Something Does the man, should the man not also protect himself? Uh, why no, did he not? The, why did he why not? Did, why did he not do a vasectomy when he knows he's a, he has a family uh, and he's done with having? He's done with having why kids. Why didn't the girl go to to him when she is safe? Why did the man not ask her if she was safe? No, too? why did she talk? Are you really supporting this? Why didn't you why did, talk? So, did, must did, you, did, okay, so you, you, so the did man, the why did you not hold your body? No, why did, did the man not hold did, his did body? The man I'm not, I'm not happy. Let me read did messages. The man Can I check from first text? Says the gender is something else. Why would you be dating a man without knowing him fully well before you before you open your legs for him? Uh, she should carry her across her bag. Eh? That's yeah. what people are saying. Hey, people are shocking me. Okay. All right, and then this here says this girl talking now is not the only one over. Uh, there are many of them like that only in UAE, but other con- not only in UAE, but other countries, even in Nigeria here. Mm-hmm. Destiny from Mushi that is men plenty where they do women like this. Eh? Mm. The man never told her he's married, but her common sense did not tell her the man is married. Now that you are pregnant, you need the support you can get. Mm. You never knew people in the UAE are like this, mm. just as we know. You do not have common sense as many young uh, entitled uh, ladies in uh, Nigeria. So uh, when you are having uh, sex without protection, you weren't prepared on your own side because you like free things. Uh, you want to be relaxed and taken care of. Now you're complaining of what? Precious, let her come and leave. Eh? Let her come and live with you now. <laughs> so she's your sister. You guys are not nice. The lady in question should come back to Nigeria and seek redress in our courts. Eh? Which courts? Nothing, eh? Not decay from my gigas sentence. When, when you are not married. <laughs> and then this says, uh, now that she, she now what will she do? Uh is let to let people know that what? To let people know that he's done since she wasn't aware he's married. He's a married man. Oh wow. I agree with Barista Darlings in this simply o- occupational hazard. In every occupation, uh, there is a risk, livelihood and severity, <laughs> uh, likelihood and severity. She has been exposed to risk, but she should have been proactive. Uh, to put control measures like better pre- contraceptives, like uh, uh, menstrual. Ah, uh, uh, you even named them. Ah, 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 ah. Hey, Buka from Isolo. He been. Are you a pharmacist? He named like five different drugs. I, I can't call their names I, I, here. I am suspecting. Why? Hey, Buka, what's going on? <laughs> Let me go back to the phone line. My phone line is. I am suspecting. Hello, good evening to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do this now. When you call me, turn out the volume of your radio set. Precious, the lady should have herself to blame. Why didn't she first think of and considered all these things before oh, going into uh, trying seducing uh, a man, a married man? Eh? Now she now seduce a married man, and then uh, the matter of pregnancy and equally forcing him to marry her. She should be ashamed of herself. Are you guys kidding me? Hello, good evening. <laughs> Yeah, precious. Uh, this is uh, Richard again. Richard, you're I, I welcome. Think Very quickly, thirty if seconds. If the young man, uh. yeah, if the if the young man, if the young man is living legally in UAE mm. and the lady is also living legally, the lady should not go anywhere, give birth to that child, and let that young man pay the early money, mm. because men are fond of you know making this kind of thing, blaming girls or ladies. I, I know, and at the end of the these ladies will be a lord. Here in Germany or in the Western world, if you do those, such kind of thing, you are going to pay. You are going to pay early money. You, you are going to pay early money. Thank so you. You married, somebody tell uh, Richard. Yeah, if you are married, if, if you are married, if, 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 if you are married, even when you are married, that's even the worst. Even when you are married, that's even the worst. 
the, the, the government the government will make you make you at everything you have so let that lady not try to go to nigeria she must be uh you know let her stay no, there and let that young man the pay law, the early money the law, thank you the law in dubai is different though. thank you so thank you, you so much all right law, okay uh, precious who knows maybe this man yeah. is even lying about coming uh mm. of his wife self my gender and lies there in a five and six uh, this one don't say gender that's a bit like eh? thanks for the good job you are doing nigeria is all uh, nigeria is all over the world oh thank you so much uh good evening precious this is a lesson to all the ladies out there to be where oh you said a lot i appreciate you see uh, let me just draw the curtain here right thank you to everyone who's been a part of the show so um barista darlington did drop a few thoughts about air of five ob ticket and air of five's issue with uh, uh sunny his uh, the person that took over from him right um yes and he also did but what was it again you mentioned the wadume issue wadume, yes uh, he then, dropped uh, he dropped a thought on then, wadume uh, the, 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 the the, the, multi-choice okay multi-choice one kind of saga between multi-choice mm. and that uh, links firs something something mm. yeah so you should go watch that on precious any tv not okay. immediately to be uploaded tomorrow morning hopefully or tomorrow before the close of work tomorrow so you should go watch that use it and enjoy your salad but Mr. Darlington, thank you so much for being a part of the show you know i appreciate you all the time right if you are Appreciate me. Oh, yeah. You're not, you're, well, you're not doing salad. You're not fast. I am, I am you did not fast. From tomorrow, I'm a Muslim. You're not a Muslim. <laughs> so, for all our Muslim faithful, Barakan is salad to you, hopefully, uh, from tomorrow. But we hear that the moon is coming out on Wednesday. Also, Faulkner, you witnessed the e eclipse today uh, yeah, in New York. Yeah, oh, wow, they, great they one. Yeah, so, for everyone who witnessed the eclipse, ah, good one, great they, one. They great one, too, great one. The, 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 the annual uh, annular eclipse. Mm. I appreciate all of you. Thank you. My name is Precious Enyi. Uh, catch me on YouTube at Precious Enyi TV on YouTube. Precious any TV. Any is spelled E N Y I, by the way. It means friend, and I'd love to be your friend to the end. I'll see you again tomorrow, God willing. I love you. Good night. Now you know.